Say good morning, Willow. Open up, ma'am. Open up. Let's get in here. Oh my god. Come here. You're breaking me. You coming? <laughs> morning it is Monday the second day of the new year and I have Carissa back and you look pretty good she does not look any worse for wear considering she has a life and went out New Year's Eve it's a full morning of a sort because uh, this is the first week of work that has kind of got put on hold for a bit so these are the ewes that Rex scanned when we were lambing here when was he here two weeks ago right before Christmas yeah. so we have a few that we have to pull out that they, they were open, so we have to pull them out. So the whole goal today is to get a group ready to get bred here in a couple weeks. I'm gonna put cedars in them, depending on when I get them, because I ordered them last week. So if I get them tomorrow, we may do it tomorrow, or we may do it all Wednesday, so. But today's the kind of the most important day. I gotta look at data, evaluate use, and uh, just sort, a lot of sorting. A lot of brain work for our first day back. Okay, let's get this going. This is for the about use the second group that we're doing. I think it's group two. So do we only really need to scan the purple striped ones and the rest of the three? So let's go activity, open up, scan. Make sure I hook it up this time, not like last time. So the red stripes are from the last one, from the last one but there I see a purple stripe right there. scan her again. I just want to see if she's done this before. She totally has. She's a double miss, so she does. Okay, and the next one, do that one again. Yep. And she was open at lamb. Open at lamb, open at skin. What's getting here? Oh my god. Yeah. I knew they'd do that. Yeah. <laughs> Every time they find a hole. Yeah, she's a definite. She's open at lamb, open at scan, open at scan. Freeloader. Does it say Ruby Sue at the bottom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, either. And Ruby has it. Yeah. I think it says Ruby Sue. Yeah, it does. Okay, we've been working on the second group. These are the ewes uh, that we're doing an utter evaluation on, and I also went through oh, a few weeks ago and pulled out any that had some poor weaning results. There was only four actually on paper that I could see. So now it's like the visual physical evaluation. Um, and we haven't, we haven't pulled any extra ones out, have we? So uh, what I do, excuse me, is I basically just reach down, do a full utter check, feel the teats, and just a physical feel of the udder to make sure there's no lumps and bumps. Um, just hard, compromised uh, quarters, halves. It's a sheep, I guess we only have two. Um, and she's good, and then Carissa, ta Carissa scans her tag, and then I check my data to make sure she, has, she hasn't had any other previous uh, problems. Okay, you've scanned her already? 9558, she is not on the list. Come on, lady. Not 
All right, looks like I might run out of battery, but we're on our last group. So these are the U lambs that also got scanned, and I think there's seven open ones. Our sort went really good this morning and uh, I think I'm getting ahead of uh, use, you know, evaluating use and getting ahead of the ones that have been maybe not earning their keep a little bit. However, uh, once I ran them through just before lunch here, I went through the group that I evaluated. I went through them again just on each individual you. I went through to see if historically she's had issues. And I do have to keep my eye on uh, three older ones and one, two, three, four, five younger ones. I'm gonna let them go through for now, but it's I'm just starting to keep track of how many times they've been open in their life. And all of these have been open once. Problem is, I had a U in this group and I'm like, I think that's Ruby Sue. And I'm not getting rid of Ruby Sue. Uh, so thankfully, I remember Ruby's number, her ear tag number, so uh, when I looked at Ruby Sue's data, I saw that Ruby was mom. So I'm like, okay. And I pulled her out and I put her in a group to get rebred. So she will get rebred. She's the only exception. Um, I shouldn't make any exceptions, but she's probably one that will end up being retired. Yeah, so that's why I try not to make too many pets in the farm or I will not have enough pasture room over there for them all. So there's four tires in the front of the feed cart there. I don't know if you can see them. This. The, one of the middle ones is like really flat, um, but it's kind of, they're all kind of connected onto one axle. So we got to take the one off to get, to get to the middle. I said, remember the first time we took these off? Well, not really. I tried to block it all out of my memory. It was not fun. You want me to find it? Rotate it and try to rotate it out. Rotate which? Just pull the shaft out. Don't pull hard because it's barely on this jack. Is it coming or not? Not really. Give me a big punch. Want to jack up on that? Everybody wants me to give you a name. The only name I have for you right now is Peta. Because you're a pain in the you know what. You all done? You're just a mama sack. You're just a mama sack. Yes, you are.
Good morning, guys. Sorry. We, uh, we're almost done weighing lambs, and I didn't even tell you what we were doing. So we're weighing lambs. It has not been fun, so it's probably just as well that I had the camera off, because there's been a lot of barn words. Not from Carissa, just from me. She's just been laughing at me. You coming? <laughs> hey there. No. Glaciers are receding, I see. It's good. Why do we have to do this every feeding? You know what to do. You are just trying to break me. It's working. Sandy is getting beaten by a six pound lamb. There. You don't need any more. You want to say hi to everybody? Say look at my big fat belly. Look at my big fat belly. Say hi. <laughs> look at that belly. <laughs> You're breaking me. You are breaking me. I swear. Okay, where you go? Well, I sort of forgot to summarize the group of market lambs this morning for you guys. We got 20 to go to the sales barn tomorrow, and I have 11 ewes in here. 11 and 20 is 31, right? And that should typically fit in the trailer, no problem, but I'm not sure how big those ewes are. So um, I haven't decided if I do one load tomorrow and try to just put them all together. Uh, which is easier said than done when you're loading, or do I just do two separate trips? Uh, we will see. Anyway, let's go here with the, uh, let's go through their stats, this group. So we had 20 lambs. The minimum was 105. The max was 117 for an average of 109.7. Now these lambs are September born. So we're at, we're in January now, right? So September, October, November, December. They're just, they're barely four months old yet. Uh, so we're doing pretty good. Other than that, I have no other information in the Gallagher because this is the group I actually switched over all their information to the uh, Flock Watch. Um, which reminds me, I have been talking to Michael and I think he is uh, he is maybe heading to Canada maybe this month even. So if he comes, that'll be exciting and we can maybe just go through the whole entire flock and get everybody transferred over to Flock Watch. But right now... Um, I've been really going through my Gallagher and going through a lot of the history, so it's it's hard to give it up now that I'm using it a lot. So um, I'll have to have a really good discussion with the Flock Watch guys just to make sure I'm not going to miss what I now know I need. You know what I mean?
Good morning. Willow says good morning. Say good morning, Willow. Today is the booster vaccine of the chlamydia. So if you remember, we had a little bit of a meltdown over the change up last time because this one says uh, 60 days before breeding and then 30 days before breeding is the booster. And the other chlamydia vaccine we were using uh, called Amoeba was five weeks and three weeks. So two totally different uh, kind of administration details. And so I asked Rex when he was here and he said, the earlier the better. So he's like, next time just always do this even with the other, um, the other vaccine. But he said from now on, he's hoping we'll just always get this. 60-30 will be what we do from now on, but he said this is fine. A bottle does 50 doses. We have around that in here. And uh, yeah, it's two mils per dose. I just wanna make sure of that. For sure. Yes. Two mils. And we use a smaller needle just so we can make sure we're doing as sub Q as possible. <laughs> Depends how wiggly we are, eh? Willow's our fearless leader of this group. I can't believe we're breeding you already. How is that possible? You're so Kisses. And it's working? Yep. Yay! We almost have our you know what together this time. Oh, sorry, I'll do that. Our dose is working. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm gonna forget the. Yeah, you can do it down there. I decided to finally sit down and go through the lambing data from my entire 20, 2022 year since I've gone through uh, March, June, September, and December. Let's go through this year's and then I'll tell you how I compare to previous years. And these are just like pretty raw numbers. Um, so total lambs that were born this year on our farm was 864. Uh, total use that lamb those out were, were 390 so uh, 2.22 lambs born per ewe so it's over two which is uh, kind of my goal so this year we had 76 stillborns which was 8.8 percent for the whole entire year 2021 in comparison uh, we had less lambs born we only had 805 this year was 864 uh, out of only 380 ewes, which uh, still gave us 2.12%. So I have increased by about 0.1. Uh, stillborns last year, though, were really good. They were only 49, which was 6.6%. We're going the right way overall, I think, between 2021 and 2022, but my stillborns went the wrong way, so I'm not too happy about that. So let's compare this all from to lambing 2020. So lambing 2020, we had 820 lambs born out of 422 ewes. So I only had 1.96 lambs born per ewe. Uh, so we're definitely on the other side of two now, which is if you go way back to videos when I was first starting doing this, the goal was always to get over two. Uh, and stillborns in 2020 were, was 73, so very close to where I was this year and exactly 8.8%, which is exactly where I am this year. So uh, that part kind of sucks. We're, we're back up to where we were in 2020 in terms of stillborns. So we're going up about 0.1 lamb every year, which is great. It seems very small to you guys and I get it. And none of this matters if they die. And that's, uh, and that's the next set of data that I wanna go through. First of all, I'm gonna say that we're doing really quite well, I think considering where we were, you know, three years ago. Um, I think we're, we've implemented a lot of things that have helped my lambing management. There's still a few more things we're implementing each time, but uh, we're doing the right things. Like we're, we're figuring it out, which is, which is a huge milestone. If you, if the good thing is you've followed me since I started uh, vlogging this stuff. Now the emphasis will be on uh, pr prevention of diseases. So the big disease this time was Q fever, so, or uh, Coxiella. So that's a conversation I need to have with Rex. Is he gonna look at those stillborns over the year and say, eh, not a big deal, or is he gonna see that 
increase in my December group and go, mm, that's a pretty big jump from where you were. Maybe it is a big deal. So those are discussions that I have to have with him. But I thought it was interesting to go through the data and uh, let you guys know. Well, we have loaded up our ewes to go to the sales barn. I was gonna try to fit the lambs on with the ewes, but because I'm loading by myself and I just, I think that trailer would fit it, but those ewes are really big that I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna push it and I have nothing else really pressing today. Um, so I'm gonna actually just do two trips. So I've texted my girl at the sales barn and said, I'm on my way with the ewes and then I'm going home and grabbing the lambs. So it's gonna be kind of a, an all afternoon affair, which is totally fine. Good morning, we have already been hard at it, bringing up some more ewes. This is Willow's group once again. Today is the day that we are gonna insert some cedar. So this is a sheep cedar, much smaller than a cow cedar. This is the, the heck is this called? <laughs> Dispenser? English has been really hard for me this week. Uh, anyway, this is what we use to, and then we lube it up with some lube. So I will just show you quick how we put this in. Tail in first. So leave your little T at the top like so, and then just pinch. And then put in, so it kind of looks like so. And then we just lube it up a little bit just for easier insertion. Now we do have a few from the fall breeding group that missed. There's a, there was uh, seven that missed. And then there's three ewes that had those, uh, that had coxiella with the lambs that aborted early in the last group. They're in this, they're in this group too. So yeah, we'll put a, we'll put a cedar in all of them. Hello, Cedie. All right. Oh, you're, leaning, you're sitting down on the job here. Just lift your bum. Lift your bum. Thank you. There you go. Oh, sweetie. I know you guys haven't had any lamb content this week, so it is time for a little lamb content. Well, I mean, you've had this lamb content because she's an everyday event. Uh, she is still needing assistance on the nipel, so that's been fun. Hey, Chris is not a fan of that job, so I'm doing it as much as I can. Um, but it is time these guys have a little bit of creep, so I do have some feeders that I don't use anymore. I'm gonna put them in here because they're they're linear so they'll fit nice in this little pen um, but before I do that I have to I do have to give them their uh, their anti uh, anti-toxin per cluster deal I can't even believe I'm giving this to you all right this is gonna be cold Mm. 
You really think I have to make this bigger? Okay. Uh huh.